So for me, it was um, a very interesting experience. This is my second uh, COP that I am attending. I also was in Japan, in Nagoya, two years ago. Um, here I've spent the second week of the negotiations and I attended quite a lot of uh, side events with major interesting issues, um, especially relating to my field of research, which is mountain biodiversity. Um, so it was very uh, a great opportunity to meet all these relevant actors in one place. Um, tell us uh, about um, what kind of activities, research activities that is you're involved in. Um, and what kind of um, uh, specific issues you are addressing uh, by means of research? Uh, by means of research, I'm uh, focusing on biodiversity policy and management and more specifically on mountain ecosystems. So I'm interested in the um, impact of human activities on mountain ecosystems and the way we can develop in a sustainable manner, the way we can uh, improve the livelihoods for mountain people in a sustainable manner. But um, besides that, I'm also very active on the field of um, environmental education. And I also mentioned this here because I think it's related. I think it's um, important to transmit academic research to the wider civil society. So that's why I work a lot with children and youth on different fields, um, on climate change, but also on biodiversity issues. When uh, COP11 was starting, they said that assessment of the agenda that was set in, in, in the uh, previous COP meeting uh, is important. Uh, how far have we reached? But from your perspective, um, how far have we reached? Uh, what are the major gaps is when it comes to the implementation of uh, the policies that are decided? Uh, let's say, uh, what are the gaps that you see in your country? Uh, I think the list is quite long. But uh, I am from Germany, so Germany is rather um, is rather ambitious, I would say, on this agenda. So there is um, a lot done already. Um, still, of course, it's always a long way. So, for example, the um, in Nagoya, the decade on biological, the UN decade on biological diversity began. So it's 2011 to 2020. And uh, here, for example, we see major gaps. So it's still one year after the beginning of the decade, still in the stage of um, preparation, conceptualization, still um, not, not at the stage where real actions are taken. So here I see a gap, for example. Um, although you are taking initiatives um, uh, as far as uh, uh, taking students uh, out for educational camps, uh, uh, environmental uh, for environmental awareness, etc. But how organized this entire effort is at a national level, uh, and has has such kind of an effort uh, been mainstreamed as far as the government agenda is concerned? Uh, I would say that we're on the way to getting there. So I would say I, I can't say no. I can't say yes. It's already. Um, 100% achieved and mainstreaming is really um, the way we are doing things, we are doing policy, but I think we are on the way to there. So we also have the IPBS being implemented, being opened now in Bonn in Germany, which is the um, equivalent to the IPCC. This is one major um, new development now and um, there is a number, a large number of initiatives actually taking place both in the area of research, the area of um, business. Could you give a couple of examples? There is the um, Business for Biodiversity campaign for example. Then as I say there is um, the IPBS coming up now. We have a number of, um, for example, university courses. So we have a number of specific PhD programs or master programs focusing on the issue. So I think there is, um, we are on a good way to also educate people to that. And then I, for example, work on a project um, where we deliver education modules to students on biodiversity, which is a new element in our program. So before we were only focusing on climate change and energy. But the fact that now we have integrated biodiversity issues in this environmental education program is an example, I would say, for the realization that this is also a point we have to focus on. Um, you are also engaged in uh, environmental educational programs and environmental education camps. Tell us more about that. 
So this is um, actually a program by the WWF Germany. And since a couple of years, I leave on vacation, <laughs> basically, uh, with the WWF. And we take groups of either children or youth, so it's um, one of each, uh, on camps for a duration of one week to two weeks um, within Germany or countries close to Germany. So we also have camps in Sweden, Poland and Switzerland, but we never take an airplane, for example. So it's um, one of the elements that we show children that the nature and the countryside is very beautiful and worth to visit just in front of your door. And that it's not necessary that you spend your vacation uh, at the other end of the world. And it's a mix of a vacation, so it's a we have a lot of fun, we do a lot of fun things, but there's always, uh, every day, a number of environmental education elements being integrated in the day. So it depends on the area where we go to. So for example, this summer I went to Switzerland, it was a cooperation with WWF Switzerland, so it was a group of both German and Swiss youth. And there the major topic was mountain ecosystems, my special area, that was of course very interesting for me. Um, glacier, climate change, um, specific flora and fauna in mountain ecosystems, um, human impact in terms of trekking, hiking. So that was um, a great opportunity. And I think that the kids leave with that with an um, enhanced understanding of how and what we have to value and conserve.